Welcome to Network Marketing Pro. My name is Eric Worre, and today I am here with Bree Richardson. Bree, how are you doing? Doing well, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. This young woman has, in just a few short years, created a huge organization, mm -hmm. uh, done very well for yourself. Where are you from? Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas. And um, talk to everybody, give everybody a little bit of a background as to who Brie is, where she came from. Okay. And, uh, you know, kind of start with early upbringing, because I'd like to get inside your head a little bit to <laughs> try and figure out why you were able to achieve okay. all the success that you've been able to achieve so far. Okay. So I was born in Houston, Texas, and uh, mom and dad had conventional jobs, nurse and um, some, my dad's a draftsman, so he did that and uh, I went to private school, uh, you know, through through high school and then um, off to college. Well, I mean, you, I, do you have, do you have uh, brothers and sisters? Oh, I do. I have, um, I have four brothers, but they're okay. all older, so I'm, I'm the youngest You're and the, the girl. Yes, yeah, only girl, so. What was um, that like? Awesome. Did they make you competitive <laughs> or just make you, you know, everything was taken care of for you? Oh, I, well, okay, so both. So I'm, I've always been competitive, but uh, yeah, I, there wasn't a worry in the world for, for me as far as, I mean, and, and when I say that, no, by no means were we rich, but there never was a want. Um, you just give that certain look. It always works. Dad, please. You yeah. know, so. Uh, <laughs> you learned that early? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So uh, great childhood growing up and um, great parents. So, yeah. Nice. So you, you grew up, go, you go through high school, anything uh, anything exciting or interesting in high school? No, I was, you know, I, when I think about it, the competitive side comes from sports. So I was, I was a softball player, always played softball since I was real little. Um, played with the boys, which is interesting, when I first started. So t-ball was with the boys. And then, um, and then, yeah, so I played competitive, not only just like league or school, but outside of that competitive sports my whole you know, up through 18. Right. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, that was probably about the highlights of high school. It was just, right. you know, as far as going as through that. that and, and then uh, you move on to college. Move on to college. Where'd you go to college? Texas State University. Texas mm -hmm. State. Mm -hmm. And what did you, what did you study? Uh, I have a, uh, I have a communications degree with a, a minor in family and consumer sciences. Okay. Have you used either of the degrees? I have. How did you use them? So I, straight out of uh, college, I went into marketing. And so I worked for marketing for Budweiser, American Express. Uh, Budweiser was for, the distributor was a salaried job. And then I went into um, working for American Express as contract job for a contract marketing company. Okay. And how long did you do that? That was, so I did the Budweiser side for two years and then the American Express was a little over a year okay. out of college, so yeah. And then what happened? Uh, then life changed and I met the man of my dreams, mm. uh, got married. What's his name? Clay. Clay. So that was during the contract job of American Express and then uh, right before that ended I got pregnant right. and then the contract ended right. and then it was kind of like, well, I can't go look for a job now because then I have to tell them I'm pregnant. I have to take off and I can't put my kid in daycare. So all of that started my Life journey. Life got real mm -hmm. in a hurry. That's right. So man of your dreams mm -hmm. and then you guys get married? We did, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> you've built a family of? Now we there's me and my husband and two boys. And two boys, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't mind me asking, okay. and it's always a, 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 a dangerous question to ask um, anyone, but especially a woman. Okay. How old are you? 31. 31 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you go through, you come out of college, you have some marketing uh, uh, um, jobs, mm -hmm. get some, get some experience in the, in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> then family starts. Right. And you kind of shift things around. Mm -hmm. And so were you like uh, being the, the stay at home mom for a while? I was. It was. It's so. This kind of ties into my network marketing career and the fact that uh, I first started network marketing when I was, I want to say, 18, mm -hmm. and I started a company. Had no clue what I was doing, and quit. Right. Yeah. So I didn't even. I. I so how long I, were you involved back then? Uh, probably not even. Maybe six months. Like, okay. Yeah. So, uh, and I saw the vision. 
but I didn't get a little taste of it, but didn't right. get anything. And more not to it. mention, I was a college student, you know, <clears throat> right. at one of the biggest party schools in Texas. So, uh, yeah, so that 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 was my, but that was my toes in the network marketing industry, the be your own boss, the look what you can you can have. So I, I did get a, a a taste of the vision at that point. Just wasn't the right time. That's right for me and you know knowing what I know now I wish that I would have yeah but figured it out it then but that's out. okay yeah so at the point where and, and I'll say I had the worst taste from it too I was like oh mom was right mom always told me if you have to pay to make money if you pay to get into something that's supposed to make you money she was the negative naysayer about network marketing everything that you that we like you know fight now in our in the stigmas in our industry I heard all of that from mm. from my mom and so, do you think did, did she ever try it in her life? No, so she never did. She mm -mm. Did, never. Are you sure she yeah. like back in the day somewhere? No, there wasn't some, you know, uh, closet full of stuff that that she bought. No, I think that that all just came from <clears throat> friends, or hearing something? other people, yeah, mm. or, or maybe watching someone else who, who felt. You know, my grandma might have gotten into something. I'm not positive, but. And, you know, Usually somebody out. has a personal experience right. of some I sort. I ask her, you know? I never yeah. really thought about asking yeah. her. Why a did you always tell me that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, ask her because it would be interesting to hear, now that she's seen your success, right. it would be interesting to hear if, she, if there's that, you know, some little story back there. Right, you know? she's in it now. Yeah, of course, of <laughs> course. I, well, I know, I know. Once your success kicked in, right. uh, that changed everything. Right. But, uh, <clears throat> so but she, she's saying, you know, hey, this is not mm -hmm. a good idea. All that stuff, and 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 back then at age eighteen, when when it was done, you said, "Y'all, maybe you're right. right. Yeah, maybe you're yeah. right. You know, maybe that I just need to, I'll go work for Budweiser or mm -hmm. these different companies or whatever, yep. and have a real job." That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. And so <laughs> then, at this point, fast forwarding to being pregnant, contract job just ended. Um, I was like, okay, if I want to do, if I don't want to go back to work, because that's what, and we, you know. My husband took, takes care, I mean, he's always saying, we, I could be off of work for as long enough to have the baby, but then still he would have had to have gone to daycare and all that, and I didn't want that. I still, the end game would have been going back to work. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of where my, that's what had my mindset of, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And I knew from that taste of the vision that, that this was a way. So I started looking and um, got back into it, mm -hmm. got back into when, it. When, when did you, when did you? find the home that you're that you're with now the home that I'm with now two and a half years ago two and a half years two and a half years mm -hmm. well, you know, what was the month and year do you remember yeah July 22nd 2013 July 22nd mm -hmm. 2013 mm -hmm. unbelievable yeah uh, that your life could change that quickly oh yeah because at that point in time um, you weren't earning anything back then when you first joined, right? Your husband was providing for the whole family? I, I when I found my home, I, I had a, um, when I was, I was with a different company and I, I did have some income coming in. So um, there was enough, income. yeah. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't, wasn't where I wanted right, to be. Right, it wasn't where you wanted to be. So, you decide to get going. Mm -hmm. And at that time, two and a half years ago, you have a brand new baby? I had a one-year-old. Mm -hmm. A one-year-old, okay. Mm -hmm. And now you have two. And now I have two. Okay. Yep. So you got a one-year-old, you're being mom, you're being wife, mm -hmm. you're taking care of, you're, you're, you're building the family with your husband. Yep. And uh, he's going off to work every day. And out of town. And out of town week. a lot, mm -hmm. every week. And you're trying to figure out how you're going to manage this. And the reason why I kind of paint this picture mm -hmm. is I think a lot of people can relate to being that stay-at-home caregiver mm -hmm. and feeling like, yes, this is important, but I've got stuff in me. Oh yeah, I've absolutely. I've got talent and skills in me that I just need to have a vehicle to be able to do uh, and and pursue right. and help people. And it, I'm, I'm more than just changing diapers. I'm worth more, th right. more than that. So you found this vehicle and you got started two and a half years ago. I did. And uh, Tell me how it started off for you. As far, it started off, it's funny, because it was... Well, you were first 30, 60, 90 days. Right, it started, well, when I first joined, I, I said, you know, um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this for the products, but I'm over here building my business, so know that. That was yeah. the kind of precedence that I set. Um, but then, 
it was funny how literally sharing what I loved of this, my first month in it turned into the pay matched what I had been making after a year over there. So that's what that looked like for me. And what was that? How much did you earn your thousand bucks? A thousand dollars. Yeah. So just by sharing some of the sharing products. like crazy. Like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like check All this over out, social check this media. out, check mm -hmm. this out. A lot of social media stuff. A lot of social media. Um, because again, there's a whole millennial generation that's mm -hmm. uh, very social media savvy. That's right. how they communicate. Right. You know, text and social media, the combination of those two. Yep. They don't talk on the phone anymore. That's me. Right. <laughs> it's, it's most most people, well, it's the millennial generation for sure, and then it's aging up quickly. Right. Um, the, you know, the older generation like myself, getting more and more connected with all the different social media platforms. Um, so you, you, that very first month, you earn $1,000, you go, oh, okay, this guy has my attention. Yep, exactly. And had then? my attention at that point for sure. Uh, then my, my drive switched. It was, it was on now. Okay, well, I've got this momentum. I'm grabbing it and I'm going because this is every, I, I just felt it that you've got to keep pushing, Brie. Don't slow down. Don't stop. Um, don't even look back to what that was, but keep going forward. And in overdrive, and I mean, for me, social media was so huge because I had the kid at home. Um, and so that was, I mean, that was how I was building my business in between diaper changes, literally. Mm -hmm. I could have start a conversation, change a diaper, go back to the conversation and nobody would know, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what drove it. And, uh, and so I kept going and uh, I, I, I built quick at, at that point. So your, your second month? My second month was probably th like three thousand. So one thousand to three thousand. Mm -hmm. Third month. Third month, I think I, 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 and I'm trying to remember that exactly, but I think my third month was the pinch me month. Like, I even took my phone into my husband and said, "That's what I made this month," and he's like, "What?" You did? Really? No, they made a mistake, he said, you know. And I think that was uh, a $9,000 month. So, one, three, nine. Mm -hmm. From you just finding something and then you went went hard. Right. Now, in between taking care of the family, how many hours a week were you working from the home, honestly? A lot. Um, I mean, <laughs> I was, you know, under the covers in the, in the, in the back. Uh, I, I mean, I, I feel like, Eight hours a day? Yeah. Eight to ten. Eight to ten hours mm -hmm. a day? Six days a week? Mm, seven. Seven days a week? Yeah. You were just... You were just There's no turning it off for me um, once I've grabbed... And you're, but you were still being the full-time caregiver? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Nap time was, you know, most, was glorious. most first time uh, mom's nap, you know, during nap time. Oh, no. That nap time, I'm like, okay, he's down. <laughs> Why were you so driven? That... Uh, for my family, but that is who I am. I mean, I've had a job since you could get a job. Uh, I want to be a successful person, period. Mm -hmm. and, and no matter what I did, I, the, I, success was something. And I'm not afraid of hard work. I'm not afraid of any of that. But I wanted that title, successful, successful. And anyone you know ever thought, I wanted to be successful. So that's true. Nice, me. nice. Now, you know, because some people will just go, hey, Husband's paying the bills, uh, or wife is paying the bills. Right. Stay at home dads right. right there, or stay at home moms there. Oh, that's fine. Right. I'll just focus here. Um, and and there, but there's something. You know, the reason why I'm asking the question okay. is 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 diving into that thing. Yeah. Because that's the difference sometimes, don't you think, between somebody who really makes it happen in 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 business. Oh, absolutely. And somebody mm -hmm. who doesn't is that thing that 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 desire, that drive, that ambition, that, that, that dissatisfaction, that need to, to, um, to grow and contribute mm -hmm. is so deeply rooted. Right. Well, part of that also comes from, I could see that my husband wasn't getting paid what he was worth, mm. you know? And so that drove me to, if I could do anything to change that situation. We were living, we, he was still there because it was a guaranteed paycheck, right? So, um, but he wasn't happy there, and so I think that too drove me, in addition to the fact that I still wanted more. Yes, he was providing and all of that stuff, yeah, but of I course. still had dreams and visions of 
wanting more. Um, but yeah, I think that from the beginning, like, because you know how your everything evolves as you go. But from the beginning was, he's not getting paid what he's worth. We're, I'm gonna, I'm going to contribute and then some, so that you know we can have the freedom of choice of what, what it may, what he would want to do, what, what we want to do. So, did you ever, did you ultimately end up retiring him? I did. So you were able to to say to your husband, guess what? You don't have to go to the work anymore. Yep. When was that? How long did that take? Um, probably a year. Um, and honestly, he could have done it before, but it was again, it was that that paycheck was there. Um, so the first year, yeah, he was able to retire. Um, but even better, he was able to start his own, you know, entrepreneur uh, venture and right. start his own company. So. Uh, it's been awesome. So he was able to walk away from the thing that he didn't love just to, for the check and start doing something that he loved. That's right. Yeah, how mm. cool is that? It's amazing. And you made that Feels happen. Feels good. <laughs> yeah. How cool is that? It feels so so good. A, after a year of hard work, um, what was what was your income up to by that that point? Oh. So my first year, I'll just go from that from what I know from that because I'm. Yeah. Horrible at math and I can't break it up by month. But right. uh, simply, the first year was uh, a little over, I want to say it was like 650000 in the first year. <laughs> it was pinch me for sure. 650000 from a standing start. Yeah. Wow. You know, from being in the industry previously though. Yeah, you've had some experience. You had a little bit of belief. Oh, and but I, I learned... I learned so much between that and to when I came to success. But you, but you didn't have any success necessarily, you mm -hmm. just learned. Right. So a lot of times people will have an experience with network marketing and they didn't earn any money, mm -hmm. but they learned. Right. They grew, they got around some personal development, they got a little taste of it, they saw the possibilities of it. That wasn't the right time or place, it wasn't the right circumstance, maybe the product didn't didn't inspire them. Uh, maybe they weren't ready, like you said, you were in college or whatever. Right. Uh, but that information was still stored. So when when the time came, they could run a little bit faster. When the when the situation was right, when the timing was right, when the ambition was lined up with the circumstances, mm -hmm. it would it would make it happen. So we talked about you know your first year six hundred fifty thousand. Does that make you comfortable or uncomfortable to talk about? Uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and I totally get that. Okay. Uh, and let me tell you the reason why I bring it up here. Okay. Is, is not to, I'm not trying to brag you up and I'm not trying to uh, paint a picture that every single person that's, that's watching this will earn what you earn. Right. Or do what you do as fast as you did it. Um, but I do want people to understand what's possible. I do want them to get a little bit of context. I do want the, the single parent out there or the providing caregiver parent out there to go, huh, wow, look what she did. Right. Um, so I want, them to, I, I want it for the inspiration, okay. not to paint some un, unreasonable picture. Right. Gotcha. Okay? So I know you've created, you've built up a million dollar a year income, you've created something spectacular uh, over the course of just two and a half years, you've radically changed your family history. Right. You know, it's changed now forever. You realize that? Until you said that, but yes, you're For right. For generations Absolutely right. and generations and generations. Let me tell you something. 200 years from now, there's going to be people who look at your family tree and say, here's where it changed. Back in 2014, right. it changed. Because great, 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 great grandma, <laughs> Bree Richardson, decided that she was going to do something different. And because of that, our family history changed forever. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. Yeah. Nice so, to think about. Isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah. So there comes a time in every career when it stops being about your income and it starts being about your contribution to others. Right. Uh, when was that for you? I think that was, you know, within the first year, in all honesty, because we got to a place for me, where we were financially stable, so uh, that that changed for within the first year. Yeah, because what I see is when it, when it's just about you, what I see is people lose their ambition. Yeah. Because they oh my bills are paid. Exactly. I'm good. Right, yeah. I don't need to do anything. I, I'm, well, why why should I work in, uh, anymore? Why should I do anything anymore? Yep. Um, 
And, and if, that, if that's what they want to do, that's fine. But the people who really go on to greatness are the people who shift their motivation. It's not about them anymore. And now it's about helping others. It's right. about contribution. Yep. What does that feel like to know that you're contributing to the lives of others? So I can kind of illustrate it by saying my husband back when we first got married would say, do you even have a heart? You don't cry at sad movies. I mean, like, you never cry. Like, what's wrong with you? Are you, you know, that was just who I was. I mean, I'm, I'm so like, I'm not, that's nothing to cry over, you know? Uh, and now you get me talking about the stories of others and I'll cry, like, I'll boohoo like a baby. So, mm. uh, so just illustrate that, uh, holy cow, that I can't, ex I can't verbalize the feeling of it of when you get a message from someone just saying, this saved me. And it doesn't even have to be Brie, you did, but this company saved me, this industry saved me um, from, go changed my life. I mean, those messages are so How often do you get powerful. them? I mean, <laughs> a lot now. Uh, you know, I would say when that started changing from me to them was probably, you know, after I got the first message a year and a half ago. And then, I mean, now I get messages. And it's still, I'm like, me? <laughs> you know, when that right. inspires me, that, that did this for me and my business. It's like, um, wow. But I, I would say I get them. I feel like it's every day. But, I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe it's a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. But that's um, about it's if, you know, right here in the forefront of my mind. That's what if for you sure. get it just once? You know, you, 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 you change one person's life. You change, change the direction, gave them hope, gave them encouragement. It's so fun to, yep. to you know, that, that aspect of what it is that we do. Well, in that, my first message like that gave me the vision of, oh, this is about more. Mm -hmm. You know, I always knew it. People always said it. And it was kind of like one of those things about the industry. But with that first one changed my vision of right. from there oh, on out. Right. This is real. Yep. That, that, that wasn't just, just my, a cliche. Yeah, it's just not my story that's, that's changing. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think separates your success from somebody else that may, might not be achieving. Maybe they've been around the same amount of time as you have. What was the difference between what you do and what an average person does in your company or, or anybody in network marketing? What, what do you think separates you? I think that it kind of goes into what we were just talking about, you know, thinking about others and what they want. Of course, I'm still running Bree's business. I'm still building Bree's business. I'm not done. But when people come to me for help, I'm there. I have systems in place. Okay, what step are you at? Let me see. Send me screen, you know, or, or virtual social media. Send me screenshots to what you're saying and, and walking and giving people the one-on-one -on -one time because you actually care about them. Uh, I think that is part of it. Uh, I was talking to a girl today. It was, it really is that, the, this, the personal development on learning how to say, what to say, uh, and, you know, I, she said, oh, I've enrolled 130 people, and, you know, I'm still struggling or whatever. And I said, well, let me see, what are you doing to put these people into your business? What does that look like? And it was, oh, well, I, I share my great story, and then I tell them where to go sign up, and... That's it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, well, you're not even, you have to work with people. And that means the people that you put in. So right. that, that's a huge difference. So um, you talk about uh, all this online stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For somebody that's maybe, you know, just past the millennial generation, or even somebody in the millennial generation, what advice do you have? What would you give somebody? Just a simple one, two, three. What, what, what steps would you take? Because how, how, how important is social media to your group? Very. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a big Is it, is it a majority of the growth in your group? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so w you know, what would you teach someone in, in just kind of generically? Okay. Uh, a step one, step two, step three, when it comes to using social media in order to be able to grow a business? Uh, that your social media profile that, you know, is your private public or private um, personal profile. And mm -hmm. uh, once you decide to start a business is now your business profile and you you build your brand through the things that you put out into social media world. Uh, so that can that has two folds, you know, one, don't be afraid to put things out there when it has to do with business. Oh, yeah, you're you're going to annoy people. Cool. They'll move on. They'll come back and talk to you in a year from now. Trust me, as long as you're consistent. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other side of that is um, emotion keep your emotions in check on social media you know be, and be very aware that social media is how you're branding yourself and your business 
Okay, a lot, a lot of people that I've seen have said to kind of try not to post every single post about join me, join me, join Correct. me, join me, join me. Right. Uh, what, what mistakes do you see people making? Exactly that, right? So they throw up their web, uh, website link. Uh, for example, let's go back to the girl that was sharing her story. You can share your story on social media and then put a, a sign up link. No. You know, then that becomes some, oh, you're just trying to sell me something, trying to get me to go there. It's, we call them lifestyle posts. So, uh, utilizing how your business fits into your daily life. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Are you at a meeting? Are you at, uh, are you hanging out with people that you met only through your network? Of course, showcase the products on yourself, that kind of thing. So a mixture of all that stuff together. But yes, definitely lifestyle. No, uh, I just think of like, you know, the TV, like buy now and free shipping or not, you know, but you have to pay the handling or whatever. Like it's just, don't be so commercialized about it, but just, just like a daily post of what you would do if you weren't um, working right. the business, but leave it in there. Leave it in, have a little curiosity, have it a little subtle. But but uh, but don't just be so blatant. That's right. You know, trying to close people in every post. That's you right. Know, private message me. Join my business. This yes. is amazing. Yes, and and real pictures versus the put together pictures. You know, like of Super product or or even like uh, their. I don't know how to, what the I don't know what the technical word is, but you know, like pictures of products saying, "Oh, don't you want to buy this this Christmas?" Right. and throwing that up there, like, no, like just showcase the products that you're using on you or when you use the services, if that's what it is, uh, put that up there, but don't try to, like you said, close a sale from a post. Right. What other things do you? I think you do social media well. What other things do you do really well uh, between you and your group? Training trainings, whether it be live events, uh, online, again, it goes back to social media, I guess all, ro all roads for my business live there, uh, lead there, but uh, training, giving my people something to plug into mm -hmm. so that it doesn't become an afterthought, but it's always, there's always something for you to plug into. I think that is huge, huge, huge. So the fact that you're training people all the time on your products, your opportunity, on every aspect of your business. That's right. That's okay. right. Uh, what else? You do social media and training. What else? Uh, live events as far as, I, I love a, a vendor show. I'll go out there and, and set up products there and, and like do that. Like a trade show type of thing? Trade shows, yeah. I love that kind of stuff. Getting out, anything that puts you out in front of people where you can start up any sort of conversation. And I think a lot of people don't think about it. They feel so much pressure about building the business mm -hmm. that they never think that you can go out and start up a conversation about tennis shoes. It doesn't have to have anything to do with uh, your business. One of the things that I think I heard you say or someone at one of the trainings was, we're in the business of collecting friends. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be a conversation about products or services. Right. Yeah, some of the best uh, natural network marketers I know, that's what they do. They collect friends. I mean, right. and they're unbelievable at it, way better than me. <laughs> you know, because it's work for me as an introverted kind of a person. Uh, right. You know, I, I, I have to psych myself up for it, but they're just, anywhere they go, they go to a restaurant, they're back in the kitchen talking to the cook. I mean, <laughs> right. they're just naturally connecting and they find a way to stay in touch with people. And those people b become prospects over time. And That's right. Not right necessarily that day. Yep. Um, but just whenever it's appropriate. Right. You know, just, but they just learn how to respect the friendship. Mm -hmm. You know, they can, and, and social media allows us to have from a distance even, some really good friends. Mm -hmm. There's people, you, some of your best friends you probably never met. Right. Uh, face to face. That's right. But but you really know what's going on in their life because of social media. <laughs> and along with that, if you're if you're branding correctly and posting correctly, they don't even have to ask you what you do. They already know. They know. They're what, they see it. Yeah, they know, they'll find right. out. Exactly. You know, you can, you can have a little private messages, talk back and forth with each other. Yeah. Interesting. Well, do this. Uh, I, what I'd like you to do. Okay. There's people out that are watching this program that were in the situation you were in two and a half years ago, right now. And they're looking for uh, a solution. And maybe they found an opportunity. Maybe they've been involved, but they haven't really kicked it into high gear. They haven't really turned the corner and gotten any traction. Okay. Um, what advice would you have for them, kind of mentally, emotionally, tactically, uh, to be able for, for them to have the life-changing experience that you've had? Why don't you look into the camera okay. or in, in, and talk to them. If, and people are going to be listening on podcasts or wherever, um, different places. 
um, share with them, just like you were face to face in a, sitting in the living room or on social media chatting back and <laughs> yeah. forth on, on Skype or something uh, or on FaceTime or whatever, okay. what you would share with them and, uh, and, and what words of advice you'd have for them. I would say, and I'm just going to say it as if it was me talking to me, you know, two and a half years ago, is that I think you have to believe that you are capable of doing. That was one thing that I would see all these people and their success in the industry, and I thought, man, would I love it, but I really had that in the back of my but, but could I be that person? Uh, see the vision of what your future can and will look like and, and put it out there and have and it goes back to the confidence that yes if I put this work in I can get there and I can I can have everything that you ever dreamed of and be the person that I always was following or watching and, and seeing and, and wanting to be that can be you it can. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You did it, sister. <laughs> um, Bree Richardson, thank you. Absolutely. Thank for, you for the uh, opportunity. It, I, I appreciate you sharing with people, paying it forward. I know you're just beginning on this incredible journey. The lives that you're going to touch moving forward are just a fraction today of what they're going to be. That's and your family is going to be different for the rest of time. Right. Because of the decision you made and the effort that you put in. Good for you. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you got value from this. If you did, make sure that you share it with a friend, like, comment, pass it around. Uh, we hope you can help us move this value and pay it forward into the world. Our wish for all of you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional, that you decide to go pro, because it is a stone cold fact that we do have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.